All right, so I'm just going to give a quick overview to the FaceIt platform. I'm going to go pretty quick because I want to save as much time as possible for the really important stuff, which is the, the demos that, uh, that Meng and Wei are going to show. So uh, I'm not going to give a complete history at all. Instead, I'm going to sort of focus on trying to give you some familiarity with some of the concepts and features that uh, Meng and Wei are going to be using um, uh, in their description. So um, in some part, a part very high level overview and part a very sort of specific set of definitions and stuff. Just quickly in the background though, I want to acknowledge that, that uh, FACET is funded by a grant uh, from the NSF Cyber Seas program. This was awarded, funding started about a year ago now, so we're about one year into a three year project. So we still have a good uh, two years left and this is um, a collaboration uh, explicitly funded collaboration between University of Chicago and, and Florida, uh, but of course there have been uh, tons of contributions from our other partners at, at Columbia and NASA and elsewhere and, and um, um, you know, Urbana and, you know, tons of other people that I, I can't really, I won't really bother to acknowledge, but uh, I don't know how to change things. Ah. Um, okay, quickly, so the motivations for, for a platform like FaceIt are the acknowledgement that that um, data, even within a specific uh, community, comes within a very diverse multiplicity of formats. So um, the FACET platform is designed in a way to be able to integrate that multiplicity into a single sort of uh, discovery environment. Um, uh, the other factor is, of course, there's a huge and diverse array of, of sources of data, um, especially within a, a community like AgMIP or a community like sort of climate impact crop modeling community. The diversity and types of data is just in sort of incredible and, and, and in some respects highly non-standardized. So uh, the platform is sort of designed to be quite diverse in order to try and be able to incorporate all that all that different uh, the, all that diversity. Uh, finally, also of course, our one of our major goals is to create a broad access to computational tools and computational resources. And by broad access here, I truly mean access for um, uh, you know, you, you sort of uh, level level access for researchers from anywhere from the developed to the developing world. Um, and, you know, all the computation is done remotely. Everything is done on on you know primarily everything you'll see here is on cloud, Amazon-based resources. So really democratizing the access to these tools, democratizing the access to to computation and resources. Um, and then finally, uh, our, our other main motivation is really to try and enable collaboration. So bringing in this data, bringing in the tools, bringing in the resources, and then really enabling collaboration around these by, by, by a really ex a, a lot of different um, mechanisms for sharing data, for sharing analysis, for sharing workflows, for sharing results and outputs in all sorts of different fun ways. Um, quickly, FACET is not being developed in a vacuum. It is actually uh, one of several platforms that's being developed um, on a, under, on, under a heading that we call Globus Galaxies. Um, the, the, um, the, the most sort of well-developed version of that is the one on the left there, Globus Genomics. Um, but there are, there are a couple others as well. PDA, PDAX is, a, is actually um, uh, a, a similar platform developed for cosmology research. And then eMatter is a platform for material science, um, and there's likely to be more to come in the near future. So um, uh, this is, you know, this is sort of one of many, which really enables us to sort of leverage a lot of exciting development going on, um, especially at Argonne and U Chicago, uh, around the developments of these technologies. Uh, briefly, the Globus Galaxies platform is about a number of different uh, uses a, a, a number of different key sort of underlying technologies the primary ones of which are Galaxy and Globus, um, but also other technologies for sort of high performance computing and high throughput computing and various other technologies that go into it. And in general, the platform is based around um, providing a number of different services, tool workflow execution, discovery, identity management, data management, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then finally, um, uh, infrastructure. Uh, everything we're going to show here and pretty much everything I think we're going to be doing in FACET is all um, um, on uh, being done on Amazon Web Services. It's all using computing resources that have been generously actually generously donated from Amazon. And in fact, a lot of the work we do um, is using resources 
um, uh, donated from Amazon. So I just want to acknowledge that. It's all about distributed and remote and cloud um, resources. Um, so one of the most important sort of the, the most important technology for understanding the demos today is the technology called Galaxy. Um, so just a few brief, I can't get into much details here, but you can browse and sort of check out the, I encourage you to go and check out the Galaxy web portal and, um, you know, look around at some of the documentation. Galaxy was developed uh, years ago for uh, biomedical research originally, um, and, uh, it, but it's an open web-based platform that's written in Python, and it has been extended to a number of different sectors, um, primarily in um, primarily in the uh, still within the sort of biomedics, uh, um, biomedical genetics, et cetera, kind of disciplines. Um, but several interesting applications. Obviously, I showed the, some of the Globus Genomics applications to extend it to other other sectors, and we think ours is a very uh, exciting uh, extension of it to sort of um, you know environmental and climate impact things. The sort of central principle is that. It's built around the concepts of data types and workflows. So, so sort of, you, you know, there are several different sort of similar uh, platforms like this that are built with different, different types of sort of different focuses, different types of use cases that they're focused on. Galaxy is really centered on the workflow, which I think makes it uh, uh, the perfect technology for, for our kinds of applications and, and is what sort of makes it in some sense, so useful for for um, for face it. There's tons of tutorials if you want to if you're curious about the sort of genomics aspect, um, and um, and you can go to usegalaxy.org, which is their central website, and you can actually play around and do some of your own weird genomics analysis and stuff if you're really curious. Uh, face it. Uh, so here's a snapshot of face it, which you'll see is struck. It has a very very similar structure to the snap to uh, to the previous. Uh, screenshot of Galaxy. Um, so I just want to go through a few of the key features. I'm not going to get into all the features by any means of Faceit that we're exploiting, but I want to introduce you to some of the key concepts um, and features that that will be that Meng and Wei will be showing repeatedly uh, over and over, so that you have some familiarity with them and and some uh, concept of them. So first of all, um, one, you know, the key thing is that it is it face it is built around familiar data, familiar data types, familiar data formats, data that's familiar to the AgMIP and the climate impact on the crop modeling community. That's sort of the key, the key foundation of it. And I'll talk about that a little more. And obviously, Mung and Wei will show that in in, in depth. Uh, it's also built around, um, you know, um, various different uh, archives of rich collections of programs. They can operate on these data types, and these operations can be anything from transforming, converting them, analyzing them, actually the operations that generate them, such as crop models themselves, and then of course visualization and all sorts of other cool stuff. And then finally, the, the central principle of it is that um, it's easy to take these tools, take these apps, take these software, and build them up, chain them together, and, um, and, and create these reusable pipelines that you can save, you can publish, you can share um, and and to really create a diverse community around your workflows. And uh, I'm just going to talk. I'm now going to talk briefly about three key components, sort of just to give you almost to get you sort of spatially comfortable with this workspace. Okay, so um, on the left is uh, is the the left column in 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 face it is the tools column. So this is just uh, a collection of all the different applications. It's the different um, that are either integral to the functionality of FACEIT or that have been developed by different communities. So you'll see currently we have three different sets of tools. These are each drop-down menus that have a bunch of tools in them. Uh, Get Data, Easy Sim, and RIA, and I'll, we'll, obviously we'll talk about a lot more about what those mean. Um, finally, there's uh, the Workflow tab, and I'm going to go into a little bit of that, but you're going to really, you know, you're going to be um, really get, get sick of workflows by the time Meng and Wei are done talking, so I won't get too much detail there. And then also the history. The history is the right column and is one of the most important parts of the Galaxy FaceIt platform. And so I'm going to talk uh, in some detail about that. A few more FaceIt features first before I get going. So the first and I think the most crucial thing, and I've said, I've said this kind of in eight different ways, but is a convenient and diverse data ingest, ingest mechanism. So access to data in all sorts of different forms stored in all sorts of different places. 
This includes access to local data stores, so uh, places where users can actually store data locally and create their own little data libraries, and also access to diverse different remote data stores. So this is just on the right, I'm showing all the different um, data tools that are currently available. It's easy to add more. You can upload files directly from your computer. We've, we've pr provided a, a bunch of different data sets from GGCMI and from, e and from the Agnifizimit project. So there's global climate data sets and historical data sets that are available from the push of a button from my PSINS archive. Uh, we also have dynamic links to, uh, to the DayMed archive, which is a really fantastic high-resolution North America climate data set. And we're also uh, we're working on uh, integration with the Agnifizimit browser. Um, finally, it also, uh, FACET allows uh, one of the key sort of structures and the thing you're going to see when Meng and Wei's talk is that FACET allows e expert users, people like Meng and Wei, people who are really trained on the system, to produce these really exciting, big, diverse, complex workflows like Cheryl was talking about, and then to be able to distribute them to less expert participants who can then reuse them, change data, um, learn about them, and et cetera. And, and that's a really sort of powerful, it creates this sort of social structure to collaboration and research that allows um, people to access all the resources with different levels of expertise. And, and, and I think AGMIP has already built a lot of those sort of those social structures. So I think hopefully FACET will allow us to exploit those social structures to create these reusable research pipelines. And then finally, access to distributed resources and tools. And um, we won't really talk about this, but there's also a lot of rich social elements that we'll be exploiting in order to incentivize contributions from participants. Um, a little bit more about tools. So for uh, just this really quick, tools are, are organized into groups, uh, which you, know, you might call tool sheds or toolboxes or something to that effect. Um, and these are organized by, func they can either be organized by functionality, like the get data tools or a set of tools that generally do things like getting data into your into your history, into your platform. But they can also be organized by projects. So you'll see I've, I've, I've dropped down here the RIA um, set of tools. And these are a bunch of tools that are specific to using the RIA um, uh, workflow. So there makes it a nice, logical, easy to access thing. Groups like AgMIP um, obviously can create their own custom toolboxes um, and, and can direct their users to them. And then, of course, users can add and modify and publish tools and string them together into workflows. Um, yeah. So uh, as a quick, rather than introducing workflows, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the EasySim workflow and the EasySim workspace. The word easy is cut off here by my, by my figure. That's what I get for the last minute figure uh, slide making. Um, the EasySim workspace, the whole point basically is to, it collects a simple data, climate tools, crop models, and plotting tools, and enable sort of an introduction to the FACET platform. So when people first show up and they want to just figure, you know, what the, how do you create a workflow, et cetera. So here are the currently, um, the set on the right are the current tools that are currently supported within EasySim. You can create simple experiments. You can run DSAT or AppSim. You can do model, tr you know, model translation, um, plot outputs, and you can even do, um, uh, simple delta shifts um, to create future climate scenarios, uh, future climate trajectories from, from historical data scenarios. Um, we've also made available a huge diversity of data that works within EasySims and, will, uh, and, uh, and also within other uh, applications and platforms eventually. Um, this is basically data from the GGCMI. We've made dozens of data sets available, um, global and regional data sets. You can choose by latitude and longitude. You, you can have access. Um, to literally hundreds of gigabytes of data um, of climate and soil data that we've made available uh, on the platform. And it also allows simple connections to remote data archives like Daymet, which I already mentioned, and I won't have much chance to say more about that. Okay, um, Rish, I wanna, this, I think this is gonna be really important for understanding the demo, so let me run through this really quickly. Um, the history is a lot more than just a history, okay? You, you need to think of the history as uh, for it's, it, it, first of all, it is a history. It's a place where data is recorded and, and the processing done to produce that data is recorded together in one place along with all the embedded metadata, metadata and provenance, which just means sort of um, metadata with, with a time dimension sort of thing, plus all sorts of other interesting information, um, tags, annotations, um, sneak peeks and visualizations, 
um, anything you can imagine. So I've just showed a very simple example of a history on the right. This is a this is for a, a workflow um, that's done as part of the EasySim pipeline. You can see I've added a bunch of tags to make it more easily searchable. This is to run DSAT on us uh, for a simple demo run using PSIMS data. And I've annotated it to make it so that people know what the hell they're looking at if I share this and publish it. Um, and, and, and each of the elements of that workflow appears here as a single item in this history. And each of these items can be visualized, it can be edited, you can attach annotations and met edit the metadata of, of, of each of these items. And you can string them together in, in different ways um, and, and change them and modify them. Now, um, but histories are, are much more even than just this recording because you can also, uh, histories can also be curated and published. And what this does is it creates, it, it creates this very versatile mecha mechanism for creating these, these elaborate data archives, which are more, more, which rather than just like a static collection of data are actually sort of these fully functional portable workspaces where you can attach a workflow along with uh, all the data that's needed for the workflow within uh, within a published history and then other people can download it directly into their into their workspace and run it um, and everything is is sort of fully functional um, uh, together everything's recorded in one in one fully functional set finally we've got a bunch of documentation that's not perfect but it exists um, on a web at, on a learn at learnfaceit.org uh, feel free to go to the to the learn face it portal and muck around there and look at some of the some of the pages. Uh, we're doing our best to document as we go, which of course is, as as you guys know, is a very challenging process. And you can also, we're keeping we're keeping a YouTube channel of a bunch of videos if anybody's interested, and we'll actually post the video of of this call um, to that YouTube channel, um, you know, today or today or later this week, and you can go and watch it again if you're so inclined. <laughs>